Good morning. Good morning, everybody. We are going to spend seven hours together. And with this kind of optimism, you go back home and say, what has happened? Where have you been? And the people, and you will need to tell that I was in the most boring event in Riga today. So if I'm asking, good morning, can I hear you back? Good morning. Okay, now the first ones are good. Let's check this side. Good morning. This side. Good morning. And the middle ones. Good morning. Thank you. This should be the most hipster, energetic, fun event of today. So I expect also you to be this one. And this event is actually really like a good fintech because for first 15 minutes, we are dealing with the sound problems. Something is not working. Something should be working later. But at the end of the day, I hope that every, everybody will be happy and energetic and that you would do a nice networking together. So the forum, the FinTech forum is organized with the help of the Latvian Financial and Capitals Market Commission and Latvian Investment and Development Agency. My name is Dirts Ruda. I will be your host or moderator for today's event. And I'm the board member of the Financial Capital Markets Commission. So what we will hear today, great speakers, more than 400 participants, a bit more than 150 here, in Art House in Riga, and then more than 250 digitally online. There will be more than 10 countries represented in this forum. So we will hear the stories of journey in the financial innovation world. We will discuss with experts the direction of fintech growth and um, incentives needed to develop fintech in Latvia. We will talk about new horizons, innovations, and dreams. But to open the forum, I invite to the stage Santa Purlaile, Chairwoman of Latvian Financial and Capital Markets Commission. Santa, please. Good morning. Uh, yeah, the one should ask why local regulator and supervisor uh, organizes the fintech forum and invites uh, all latvian and all abroad who, who who are interested in that to participate in this event because uh, why why should we care about that uh maybe even you know lesser lesser market participants less problems for us but that's not the case for us um, Actually, we have put uh, fintechs and financial technologies and innovations as our core priority already for a second year in a row. And uh, definitely that's because innovation, what's matter, the digitalization and technology, that's what matter. And at the end of the day, the growth of the businesses and contribution to local economy that matters the most. And uh, we've been working very, very closely with the, our stakeholders, with policymakers, with you entrepreneurs. We, we, we've been listening into the needs, what, what you are expecting from the local supervisor and regulator. That's why we've gone already through some developments we have introduced our innovation hub, our re regulatory sandboxes, and, and we are actually quite satisfied with the process we are in. Again, someone might ask, uh, we've been hearing about the neighbors, Lithuanians already being like years ahead of us putting the strategy, FinTech strategy uh, at the top of, 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 of uh, government uh, agenda as well. However, I should say, uh, you know, always there, be, there should be 
other opportunities, other uh, possibilities to to, to look uh, around, to, to to discuss, discover uh, the place where to grow, and definitely uh, we as the as the local supervisor and regulator have put quality uh, over the quantity as our trademark. Uh, we know that the licensing process, the you know, the all the regu regulatory uh, uh, environment might sound really complicated, cumbersome, and who who will go through that? That's why I think uh, we need those discussions as of today to come together, all of us, policymakers again the regulators, you entrepreneurs, investors, because all innovations, all businesses needs investment, needs funding to grow. And uh, definitely I'm looking forward to have open, trustworthy discussions today, challenging discussions today, to understand how we can uh, look towards those challenges, also in the regulatory environment. We all know that new regulations also in you uh, are coming and, and we need to approach that in a particular manner. But I believe that at the end of the day, we will find the key how we will, how we might together develop FinTech world to invite those nice growing and sustainably growing FinTechs here in Latvia and make this environment and make Latvia to prosper with the good, good fintech development. So looking forward to have really nice discussions and let's enjoy. Thanks. Thank you. Santa Purgaile, chairwoman of the Latvian Financial and Capital Markets Commission. This forum, as I said, is jointly organized by the Financial and Capital Markets Commission and Latvian Investment and Development Agency. So I'm glad to invite to say opening words also by Nikita Kazakevich, Director of the Innovation and Technology Department at LIA. Please, Nikita. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning. Uh, it's such a pleasure and uh, honor uh, to stand today in front of you, so many in front of so many uh, brilliant, sharp, and talented minds of fintech sector. Uh, today's forum is definitely focused, at one hand, on the present, clarifying the present and understanding what is happening, but on the other hand, it's as well focused on the future, where the country and the whole sector is moving or will be moving, and thus it is in a sense, okay to dive into the future without a plan. It's kind of okay, might be a little more risky than usual. However, with the plan, with the strategy, it is much more determined and clear where the path is going. Thus, uh, in collaboration with the, with the public, the, the collaboration with the public and private sectors, uh, the FinTech strategy has been developed. And the FinTech strategy is a document. It's okay, it is document, but still what matters the most is the actions that follow afterwards. And thus, the first uh, call to action during my speech uh, is for you, the ecosystem drivers, both public and private sectors, investors, at ESRA, please let's join forces, let's become an even closer ecosystem and let's make the strategy, the action plans that are meant there uh, implemented. And not only that, even more. And the strategy shouldn't be a rigid document. It has to be dynamic and has to be improved uh, iteratively during many validation and testing cycles. You know that even better than I, I do. And thus, the second call to action from my side today is please, you especially private sectors, fintech entrepreneurs, or entrepreneurs within that sector, please give us constructive feedback on what, what, has, what can be done better and what has to be done in order for Latvian, Latvian startup ecosystem, Latvian fintech ecosystem to prosper and grow uh, faster. And to give this feedback and as well to get any consultation, I just wanted to mention that you can approach uh, the team that's wearing this shirt. So they're gonna answer all your questions, no pressure. 
uh, and uh, as well, you can give them the constructive feedback that you think can be implemented within the ecosystem and within the public sector as well. And thirdly, uh, it is true that uh, there's not as many uh, support mechanisms in LIA for fintech sectors. But one that I want to mention and that is applicable for all of you is, uh, especially when you're f uh, focusing on uh, scaling, scaling globally, we have many, many representation offices all around the world. Not in every country though, but in many uh, innovation hubs and their work, their job is to help you to scale to those countries. So don't be shy, uh, find the, the people with their shirt and ask for, uh, for the ways how you can get approached and approach them to get all the necessary information. So use this to scale, we are here for you to help you grow here locally, develop locally, and grow globally. And uh, nonetheless, I just wanted to give, use this time to give a little, with your help, uh, give a little round of applause for, for the FKTK and LIA team who has created this event, came up with an initiative, and actually made it a reality. Please help me, let's give them a hand. Cheers. Thank you very much. That's it from, from my side for now. We're going to meet uh, again during the panel discussion. But for now, let's begin and let's make this event a truly fruitful. Thank you. Thank you. Nikita Kazakevich, Director of Innovation and Technology Department at LIA. And finally, it is often said that during times of fast development and also crisis, the role of state and local government increases substantially. Please welcome for the opening speech, Martin Statis, the chairman of the Riga City Council. Please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, those who are online. I especially welcome those who are in presence. Thank you for coming to our city. Thank you for supporting our economy. Please don't hesitate for staying some days longer. And you know, even though the microphone and the, and the politician is very dangerous combination, uh, I really do not like speeches, so please consider this more as a report from my side. So those hard, uh, high added value services are driving force for Riga development. Some of priority service sectors in Riga are global business centers, ICT, gaming development companies, cybersecurity, closed solutions, and of course the fintech companies. And I assure you, Riga values very highly the fine tech companies that are already established in the city. And we are open to the new fintech companies, and it is in our interests. So the future lies in innovations, openness to the global trends and international players. And development of those three industries, I think, rests on three pillars. It's, um, uh, first of all, uh, regulation, then uh, the technology and infrastructure, and then I think education and the talents. On regulation, currently the capital uh, repair of the Latvian financial system has been completed. Clear rules are defined on the market participants. We are part of the European Union market, which operates according to the EU principles. There are no local barriers for new players to enter our market. We have also one of the most competitive regulations on the startup field. On infrastructure, Riga is a dynamic city. This is also the capital of the largest city of Latvia. And if you take into account also the Riga metropolis area, it's more than one million inhabitants. We have excellent connections. The Google Maps shows that you can uh, get from the airport to the Riga within 20 minutes. And uh, our national airline, Air Baltic, provides a connection with the whole world. And Riga has one of the fastest internet uh, connections in the world, as you already know. The digital infrastructure, data centers, co-working spaces are located in this city. And communication with the public sector is already largely digitized. Then about education and the talents. I see Riga as a city where global talents meet. Following our initiative, the Latvian Parliament 
adopted the regulation of the digital nomad visa. Please check it out. The municipality also has its own support programs such as uh, work in Riga. The startup ecosystem rapidly developing here and receives support also from the municipality. So in other words, it's a great place for the fintech companies. And as we speak, the Riga municipality is making this place even more attractive for you. So have a wonderful and successful forum and thank you for shaping the future of Riga. Thank you so much. Thank you, Martin Statis. And thank you for the inspiring words. Now, they say that if you, at the end of the day, leave your workplace, be it in office or nowadays at home, and your smartphone has more than 99% of the battery, then you indeed have worked very hard, and your boss should be proud of you. However, we, on the other hand, are really like to hear from you and we invite you to do the opposite. Please use your gadgets, mobile phones or laptops, today very actively. Please participate during panel discussion and submit your questions via Slido. Send your questions using Slido platform and there should be code coming up. If not, if I could ask you to open Slido, and then I could dictate, because there will be first task to check that Slido is operating now. Can, we, can you open Slido, S-L-I.do, and check the pool? And the first poll is warm-up question. Please type one word that FinTech in Latvia associates with you today. So please type one word that FinTech in Latvia associates with you today. It's Slido and the code is 23232442. 23232442. You can see the code on the top. And the question, one word that FinTech in Latvia associates with you today. Can we see cloud? So, we will come back with this one later on. And uh, now it's time that once you write down, whether it's future, whether it's bright, whether it's smart, whether it's Latvia, please type one word, and we will see it a little bit later. Now, we will have four sessions today. Between those sessions, you will have networking opportunities and digital exhibition. All sessions will start with one or several presentations, followed by discussion, and the topics will be fintech development trends, capital availability for fintech companies, fintech and the regulatory framework, and finally, innovative technologies and talent attraction. The word fintech has become such a widely used term that it can actually mean anything today. Some say that the entire financial services sector can be categorized as fintech. Oh, yes, finally. Thank you. So the first impression when you hear fintech in Latvia, you can see it's future, innovation, money, growth, crowdfunding, and many other things. Newborn, much talking, less doing. So let's try to do today otherwise, a bit more doing and a little bit of talking to talk about what is fintech ecosystem today in Latvia, what are the most significant challenges and trends, regulators' priorities and new approach in innovation, it is great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker who has been in charge of financial innovation department at the regulator for the last two years, Marine Krasowska, director of financial innovation department at 
Financial and Capital Markets Commission. Marinette, please. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. And also, I hope that you will see also the presentation. So today, we have a lot of, a lot of interesting stuff that we, we, we are very focusing on the fintech. And of course, everyone is asking, OK, what fintechs really means and how we shall understand it. Uh, one can say, say that it is like uh, something that is still not regulated, but it's legit. One can think that is technologies or talents multiple by the finance, and as a result, we are getting the fintech. When we're talking about Latvian fintech landscape or environment, we can say that Latvian fintech sector is quite young, but ambition. The story of Latvian fintech environment started about two years, uh, sorry, 10 years ago, and uh, as a result of symbiosis of competences and I, in IT sector and competences is finance. As you know, the banking sector in the Baltic, especially in Latvia, has been quite significantly important and developed well. And as a result of that, and as a result of other initiatives, we've got a lot of uh, other support from the regulatory side and from the governmental institutions that supported this uh, growth in innovation and the fintech sector. What we see today and what we were talked already and already mentioned, so we have several opportunities. We have a good taxation system. We have a welcoming infrastructure in Riga city. We have fully digitalized uh, approaches in the in in financial sector. We have well-established regulatory setup that is allows any fintech company work cross-border without any limitations. And of course, the other activities like we did in the regulatory launching uh, innovation hub and, and regulatory sandboxes. And of course, if we can go deeply and see how our Latvian fintech market looks like, so we see that it's quite well diversified. There are about 100 companies running right now the business among 400 startups taking in Latvian segment as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a target. And of course, we see that it's quite well diversified. We have companies running the businesses in payments. We have a well-represented private lending sector. We are still looking for the blockchain growth in crypto when the new regulation also will come into force. We have a good stuff of data and regulatory uh, initiatives and rec tech companies who help to develop and provide support not only to FinTech, but also for a traditional banking system. And it makes it much more stronger than it was like five years ago or even later. And right now, of course, we see that many of companies that you present here, and, and they also be presented on the stage as the speakers, they have got the international recognition. Of course, we have a good examples to be proud of. We have uh, perfect companies who have been sold. We have uh, companies who are developing. We have companies who are still uh, called and very well called the good position on the market on European level. Everyone is familiar with uh, some names like Twino, like Mintos, like Altero, and Nordegens that had written the result. And we also see the today's uh, story of, of the company too. And of course, everything is light of understanding that we need to go to the financial ecosystem. And we started to build it. And thanks for the initiative of uh, Minister of Finance, who has opened the, uh, the documents or, or initiative come to build the strategy, national fintech strategy. At that time, we understood that we need to grow and build the strategy based on the four major pillars. And of course, the one of them is regulation. And in this sense, we do not think like, like to regulate everything and everyone, but helps to create this transparent environment when the company can work without uh, any, any doubt of being like, uh, like found or being out of market. Of course, the next one is the infrastructure and development. It is everything that concerned regarding the ITC sector and support of that. And number three is the access to equity capital. And of course, as a regulatory, we support all forms of the capital or forms of the equity should, should be developed into Latvia. And of course, the improvement of uh, talent acquisition. So all those four areas of, of the FinTech strategy still requires, uh, requires the improvement. And that's how we agree to collab between the state institutions, governmental institutions, and the industry. And the majority of the initiatives and ideas for the FinTech strategy came to the industry that has been having involved in this, and thanks for that too. 
And currently we see that it will go to the next level and it will show the next start. Because as today is already mentioned, the, the FinTech priorities is, is uh, one of the FCMC priority right now. And we promote the development and we have created several tools to support. One of them is Innovation Hub. The story in the Innovation Hub had been started several years ago when European Banking Authority understood that we need a platform across the Europe where we can supervise and learn more about the technologies and the companies because as you see the regulation is a bit later than any technologies development. And Latvia, in Latvia we launched the Innovation Hub and we see very good results. We have allocated resources for that and we see the increase in number of consultation, increase in number of companies who start, who want to start working in Latvia and start to think regarding how to get the license and how to, how to get business done in, in Latvia starting it and use it as a platform or as a sandbox before they are growing and, and, uh, and created new solution across the Europe. Innovation Hub is a good platform that has been used for us and we use it for uh, other events like this. Uh, it is not the first event we are an, an arranging because during the pandemic time we have arranged almost once a quarter public event, an online environment where uh, a lot of different kind of companies will be sharing the experiences. Innovation Hub is also for us as a regulatory is important platform to learn what is on the table on the fintechs. And of course, to support the fintechs, we have launched a new website this summer, Fintech Latvia EU, when you can find the most relevant information where the, how to get into the sandbox, how to get into Innovation Hub, how to apply for the consultation. But it is a tool to support with you with the, the most latest information that is on the top. Besides the Innovation Hub, we launched Regulatory Sandbox. The Regulatory Sandbox is the place where the companies who are working in the innovation environment and created new solution that is out of any regulation, it is not supported by any legislation yet, can come and test their ideas, test their minds and business model in order to understand how it is compliant or non-compliant with existing regulation. It is safety environment and we have a good experience last year. We have we found the, the company a company approached us and, and we have created the special, uh, special test for them. And what we understand a lot of this, and it helps us to get the idea that there are plenty of companies who still require our support. We understand that during the conversations with the companies, uh, we created uh, the absolutely new project of it. And we understand that there is a lack of uh, access to data in the industry, lack of access to data to test the environment, lack of access to data to test the solutions. And that's how we have started to work under other projects, because the fintech environment is not something that is uh, created only, on, only on, uh, in uh, an environment that companies are working, but it's still we use fintechs by ourselves as a regulatory to create our own environment. And we have launched Internal Innovation Lab. So Internal Innovation Lab is a place where we, as a regulatory, with our employees, testing and experimenting with the different technologies in order to understand how to help the fintech grow and in order to fully digitalize our own processes as for regulatory. It is important for us to go to the fully automated licensing process, fully automated regulation, and fully automated uh, reporting standards. And this was the platform that has been used for us to also to understand new technologies our market participating to work with. For example, cloud technologies, we discovered a lot of benefits for ourselves. Uh, currently, we are going to the cloud as a regulatory by ourselves with all our infrastructure in order to improve the situation with the data. We have tested different kind of uh, other stuff and, and other projects. And one of them, what I, I would like to underline today and use this uh, platform for the purpose of CAL. We are calling for talents. Uh, when we started to work more with, uh, with the market participants who understand that they need to have a fake data or synthetic data to test their solution, and there is a lack of access across Europe with such. And we decided to create this synthetic environment when everyone can come and test their own solution. It could be concerned like ML solutions, KYC solutions, or different kinds of um, tools that are responsible for the compliance of the regulatory. And the synthetic data project uh, has been started and we have created the first prototype. And very thanks for the industry partners who have supported us with advices and consultation how to get there. 
it would be the first project that is quite ambitious when we can collaborate more with the fintechs, more with the rectechs, more with the developers of IT tools, and we want to develop this platform together with the industry. So if you scan this code that you see right now on the, on the, on the wall, uh, you will, your, your phone will open the application uh, on, on our website, and if you have ideas how this synthetic data project could be developed, and how you can help and how you can collaborate to us, we will be very appreciated because we need the talents from the industry. We are working in our own environment. And of course, using this, I would like to thank all of you for support us and welcome to our new website that also is a platform which we want to develop together with the industry. And of course, everything that is happening right now and everything that how should it happen in, in the future is only to the, due to collaboration. Collaboration because, because, uh, with, uh, between the governmental institutions and collaboration between the companies in the industry. So if we're again we're coming back, what is fintech? So the fintech is our future. How far we will go, it depends only for us. And of course, our target is to ensure this collaboration between the ecosystem, to ensure that all four elements are working perfectly. And thank you very much for coming here and being part of not only this event, but also for the industry. Thank you very much. Yes, excellent. Many thanks for, to Marine Krasowska. I hope two things you noted. The first one, our webpage, fintechlatvia.eu, where we put news and projects where we are working with. And the second one is the project Synthetic Data Lake, or project we have started to work and we really invite market participants to come and discuss how this can be further elaborated, improved, and used for the benefit of the industry. Now is the time for the first panel discussion on fintech development trends and growth perspectives. Before that, I would like to remind, please use Slido application to submit your questions, or if you see a good question already, please upvote the question so that we have more lively discussion. It is said that there are no small or big countries, but there are slow and fast ones. We just heard that there are currently more than 100 active financial startups in Latvia, but are we as a country fast or slow one? To find out development trends, forecast. What are Latvia's advantages and how government can help to grow and to lead fintech sector? I invite the moderator of the first panel, Nikita Kazakevich, Director of Innovation and Technology Department at LIA. So, Nikita, this will be your mic. Thank you. There you go. Thanks. I told you that I'm going to be back. Okay. Um, I mentioned the strategy at, my, uh, at the opening speech. And uh, the strategy is, you know, forecasting the future. And uh, in my opinion, it's, it's quite an impossible job to do. You know, there are many external factors that might affect it, that may affect today or tomorrow, especially tomorrow. But in any case, we have to speculate. We have to, you know, explore what are the possibilities of present and what are the possibilities of the future within the fintech sector. And for that, I have a pretty cool, a very inspirational squad. And as the first, uh, as a first panelist, uh, and you helped me with, with applauding and giving a hand, uh, I invite the CEO and CFO of Mintos, Martin Schwalters.
Please, Martin, take a seat. Anywhere. Very well. Again, with the applauses and all the energy, please welcome to the stage uh, the head of Fintech Latvia Association, Tina Luce. Yes, applauses. Very well. It's a pleasure that you are with us today. Okay, as a third panelist, please welcome the director of Riga Investment and Tourism Agency, Fredis Bikovs. Woo! Yes, very good. And again, again, we hold the applauses, the representative from Ministry of Finance of Republic of Latvia, Dina Bossa. Thanks, thanks, very good. Alrighty, how you feel? It's okay? Energy? No, we're gonna... We're going to boost the energy. It's all right. And uh, could you please give, we have one mic for the panelists. Sorry for that. But uh, Martin, you will be the first one that I'm going to uh, push the question on. And uh, we have to explore at the very beginning, since we speak not only about the future, but about the present as well. So we have to have a foundation, a base from which we're going to start. Uh, we have to explore as well a little, at least a little, uh, of the Latvian fintech strategy. And I know that almost all of you were part of the group that was developing it, creating, giving feedback at Astra. Uh, but the whole strategy is meant for you. The whole strategy is meant all in all for the private sectors, for the fintechs to blossom, to, to grow, and uh, to make Latvia you know, a great place for fintech startups to relocate or to grow from here. Thus, uh, the first question from my side is uh, regarding your personal or as a Mintus representative feedback and what is the strategy? Is it going to change anything in your life uh, when it's going to be implemented? Yeah, so we were like one of the participants uh, among many who were kind of actively participating in developing that. Uh, so uh, we were also happy to see that many of the suggestions by us and by our colleagues were, uh, colleagues from the industry were taken into account. So we definitely see that it, uh, it will help. And uh, as I see kind of, uh, not only on FinTech, but in general, uh, anybody kind of does business, the uh, role of the government is to provide infrastructure and rules how to use that infrastructure and kind of leave to the people running the business to kind of think what what, what, what would be the best so uh, in, in a way this kind of strategy also kind of foresees that, that there are kind of number of points how to kind of make the regulation uh, not only kind of as something that will follow what's happening in Europe but right up front lead which I think is a, a super important point Another thing is, uh, and which would help kind of companies as Mintus and uh, other companies is uh, really kind of building the ecosystem and uh, having kind of much better co communication between kind of many parties involved. So not only kind of from business side, but also from uh, different uh, regulatory authorities, from the state uh, entities, from the mi mi ministries, as Dina is from, so that this kind of communication will sh hopefully should kind of improve, improve further. And uh, another thing which I think was already kind of men mentioned, uh, and I guess there will be another pal panel on that, is really about kind of getting, getting talent. Because like, uh, especially when you go abroad and you need to scale up the business, at some moment you kind of just like the talent here in, 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 in Latvia. And this is like an important point which should also be hopefully solved. Sure, very well, and uh, I'm glad that you highlighted the, that the strategy is not only the, the document that, that is written, but it's you know, the initiative for the public and private sector to collaborate. And just a uh, uh, kind of short question in regarding how was that collaboration? Was it effective? Anything can be improved? Uh, well, as a CEO, I always think that <laughs> things can be improved. <laughs> so that's like my d d default mode. But, uh, Overall, uh, what, what I think kind of went uh, went great uh, was that uh, the number of people involved uh, from different areas, and that uh, really the feedback was uh, was taken into account. And I think at the end of the day, like the like the version, what was uh, I think it's not yet approved as kind of final. Well, it's internally approved as a final. It's not officially or whatever the kind of um, uh, kind of uh, yeah legal clause could be. Uh, so it's it's done well. What could be improved is definitely is the speed with which we're kind of going ahead and uh, getting it uh, approved. Because as in any business and especially in fintech, speed is, is super crucial. 
see. Uh, just in case, could you please hold the mic a bit closer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, and the next question is for Tina. Um, you represent the association as well. So Martin, he explored and described, you know, the, the potential benefits for Mintos and of course for the country as well. But you as a representative for the whole association, wow, it's huge. Uh, what does it change for the association? Does the strategy actually help for you to blossom, to develop? Uh, or is it an extra burden, extra task to do for you? Well, I think that uh, strategy is not needed for association as such. I think it's uh, going to help uh, uh, our country flourish as an economy. Uh, I think it will help uh, the industry uh, to grow. Uh, we, we have seen actually from the data that uh, we already are doing quite well. Uh, but so far what we have been missing was uh, actually this structured uh, perspective also from the public sector. And, uh, you know, going without a strategy is like going into wood without knowing where we want to go and, and doing that blindfolded. <laughs> so, so I think that uh, this is actually great news that, uh, that uh, we are having that dialogue. We have reached to, to a structured document. And uh, it definitely is going to bring uh, more clear rules from the, for the industry. Uh, it will definitely bring more clarity for the investors uh, and, and hopefully they will see that, uh, that we are the place uh, that is uh, friendly and available for, for doing business. Actually, I think that uh, as one of the outcomes of doing this dialogue with the industry is also this event and, uh, and, uh, and that is a good sign. Um, and uh, from the public sector altogether that, uh, that shows that, uh, that we are open uh, and we are willing to, to help foster uh, this, uh, this industry. Sweet, thanks a lot. Uh, but the same question, uh, short question as I asked Ma Martin, uh, how was the collaboration, how was the discussion, was it effective, okay, or what can be improved? Well, yes, I think that uh, actually Martin already covered it pretty well. Uh, we, actually, one of the greatest benefits uh, for, for drafting the strategy was that uh, industry itself was brought together because so far we have seen uh, that it's uh, a little bit fragmented, I would say. And, uh, you know, everyone is involved in their daily business. and. Uh, I think for fintechs especially, <laughs> it's like someone mentioned that uh, it's this hipstery environment and so on. Maybe uh, like they are not so accustomed to do this dialogue with public sector. So I think that that was a great lesson to for the fintechs also, uh, how to bring the message to the sector, uh, how to help uh, to improve the environment. Uh, yeah, the, the only kind of uh, room for improvement, uh, as, as Martin mentioned, might be the speed uh, with which we are working on it. But at the same time, I must also mention that we have already seen from the regulator that uh, uh, whether there is strategy or, or, or no, uh, they are already uh, improving their processes and, uh, and uh, becoming more open and, and uh, uh, we are currently working as an association on a fintech report, and uh, so we have uh, gathered uh, some feedback for, uh, from uh, industry players, and we already see that uh, the feedback of the regulator's work is uh, very well uh, assessed by the industry. So, so, uh, so I think uh, we are uh, kind of uh, at a good start. <laughs> Uh, that's an important and brilliant takeaway. Thank you very much. And the question now is for Dina. Uh, can you pass the microphone, please? Um, so we heard what it might change or what were the benefits uh, from the private sector that you as a representative of the whole ministry today. Uh, <laughs> no pressure. But uh, please, can you expand upon what does it change in your everyday life from the ministry perspective? Is it an extra to-do task, an extra burden? Or does it change somehow the, 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 how the ministry looks on the, on the fintech sector and how it collaborates with that? Um, so I myself am very happy about uh, involvement with uh, all our industry participants. 
and also the regulator in development of the strategy document. Uh, because from the uh, perspective of the government, uh, it is a very important document just for setting the ground for the development of fintech, for the recognition that uh, this uh, sector is important. Uh, this sector also is, uh, let's say, um, uh, with a very high potential for development. Uh, we also see the ground for uh, let's say, activating uh, our common work uh, for the benefit of the development of the fintech regulation and also for the support mechanisms for the sector uh, within the uh, public sector as well. Because we have already foreseen some cooperation mechanisms with the other uh, governmental institutions and, uh, of course, uh, we would uh, more uh, closely cooperate with the uh, fintech uh, sector as well. Uh, and we will establish the routine uh, mechanisms for um, having their opinion on uh, possibilities, uh, on, on necessary changes to the regulation, uh, creation of a more favorable environment. And this will give us, uh, let's say, mandate to activate all the other um, public uh, administration um, for the support of the sector. I see. Great. And uh, what you heard from the previous speakers, uh, the speed is something that can be improved uh, within this collaboration. Everything else was OK, was good, was great. Can um, we increase the speed as well? Well, I think the strategy document will give us a mandate also to accelerate. Okay. So, <laughs> very well. Thanks. Yep. Uh, thank you very much, Fredis. Uh, I didn't forget about you. <laughs> uh, uh, I know that you are very curious and interested within uh, within the talent attraction. Uh, could you please expand upon what is the state since we are still, you know, at the phase that we are exploring the, the present, and you knowing Riga pretty, pretty much the best in here. Uh, what is the, the talent situation right now for the fintech sector in Riga, maybe Latvia as well, and uh, what can be done? Yes, I mean, um, I've, I've been now in this role for, I think, almost six months, and, okay. and uh, a lot of my uh, discussions which I have with potential investors or existing investors are actually around talent, so that's why this topic is so close to my heart. Right. Um, and uh, I would say that's, I think, the biggest difference let's say compared to 10, 15 years when a lot of international companies, they outsourced the operations to Latvia and that was historically very much cost driven, mm -hmm. where this is not the case anymore and, we, and, and now it's mostly talent driven. So uh, we had a lot of discussions with potential investors where they say they, they don't really care how much the talent costs as long as there is talent in the country and city. There are companies which are relocating from very expensive locations as well and they say, well, it wouldn't be more expensive than, let's say, Switzerland to Norway and, and etc. And we're just struggling to find talent everywhere. And seeing around that, um, uh, I think this is the new battle that is going right now, the battle for talent. And, and uh, there are different tools that cities and, and countries are using around. And one of the questions which I, I've been also asked when joining some international events is, uh, and, and this is a quote from one of the big four consultants, uh, ex explain me in, in few sentences, what is your country or city a talent attraction strategy? And, <laughs> and, and to be honest, Riga finally is, is forming one. Uh, we will be launching a new uh, platform which we call Work in Riga uh, somewhere in October, November. It's more of a marketing tool, but the idea is to connect existing investors uh, or anyone who is employing people actually in the city with with talent across across the globe and help simplify kind of the the way for this talent to to come to our city uh, but that's more on the marketing side uh, i think uh, my kind of dream project mostly is at, at this point i call it a dream <laughs> um, and and many cities have already done that is implemented in one stop agency for uh, highly skilled talents and that's the work also mostly on process level already is to make sure that uh, it's a faster and easier to, to relocate to country. And this is somewhere we need also to partner up on national level to make that happen because it's not only on municipality level. 
but um, and, and we're exploring a lot just what Helsinki Oslo does uh, do in that sense because this is the most interesting part right. uh, and I think uh, just to kind of set the sense of urgency for the fight of talent, uh, while I was speaking to different cities in our region, what are they doing? We're at the stage where we kind of try to position to market ourselves as a place for global talent. Now there are cities who actually pay money for people to come to their city. Like what? Like, for example, uh, Vilnius have just implemented two support programs where they pay, I think, up to three or four thousand euros for an uh, individual who is relocating to, to, to Lithuania for the first time. This is just to show the kind of the, the, the bloody war <laughs> for the talent which is uh, out there, and we have to catch up with that. So how much Riga can afford to pay? We'll see. I think, I think to be honest, <clears throat> this is something that we need to partner on a national level. I'm sure this is... Uh, we need to look for some uh, European money as well in that sense. Sure, got it. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we covered the, the, the present and then you already tackled a little of future, you know, the strategies to attract the talent. Uh, but Tina, I have a question for you in, in regards to what is, you know, the, the, the title of our discussion or the trend and forecast for the financial uh, fintech sector. What is the future? Well, I think that, uh, that the industry itself will be uh, best suited to comment on it, but I think uh, that um, at some level we can't even uh, predict what is going to come uh, because there are like uh, many features that we still have to work on, like uh, open data, instant payments, improvement, etc. Uh, but what we have, what we can see already now in the in industry is that uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, development in uh, artificial intelligence and robotics uh, being used in uh, in, uh, in the business. Uh, there is robotics also as well in fintech. Yes, okay. e exactly. And uh, what we uh, what we see is that uh, fintechs are also contributing to uh, circular economy trends and. Uh, Actually, fintech is influencing sort of all uh, all other sectors and uh, reshaping uh, the financial industry by large. So I think, like, if we will look back uh, to to where we are now, like in five years, even uh, like the the banking and everything, how we access uh, financial services will look much more different uh, than, than we are used to have it now. So that, that's a lot of power uh, for one sector. Uh, are you going to use this power for good? Sorry? Yeah, are you? Uh, what I said is for FinTech, you mentioned it's, it's covering all the sectors pretty much. Uh, so it's a lot of power, right, to, to impact all those. Are the FinTechs are going to use it for good, at least in your association, let's say it? Uh, I believe that uh, generally, yes, of course, uh, there is always, you know, there, there has to be some regulation in place and, uh, and there must be someone who looks uh, after uh, compliance and, and that there are these safeguards. Uh, but like one trend that must be paid attention to is, um, is how to strike the right balance between development and regulation. So the regulation is uh, more enhancing than restricting. Uh, like one trend uh, that, that was interesting and uh, it's yet to be answered from what we see, uh, well again working on our uh, report on FinTech, is that, uh, that uh, those sectors where the regulation came in place, uh, the market participants tend to decrease. But I think that it's yet to be answered whether it's a bad sign for the regulators as such, but that's something that uh, we should keep in mind and uh, see whether there is a room for improvement. I see, thank you very much. And uh, Martin, uh, got a question for you as well. I didn't forget about you. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, since Mintos is uh, famous, it's a successful startup uh, coming from Latvia, uh, you probably know as well the competition in Europe globally. What do you think, you know, as well the, the, the countries and the regulations probably in maybe other countries? Where do we lag behind? So, uh, Tina, at, at least uh, uh, painted the, the future, you know, a little. Uh, but in, in terms of what can be done, uh, could you please paint a future of what is happening 
all around the world and where we lag behind and what can be done to tackle that? Well, when we look at the kind of financial industry, uh, it is still kind of, uh, um, kind of in some geographical silos because let's say for Europe there are a lot of kind of EU regulations so you cannot right. really kind of look uh, globally at, at, at once. Um, where, where I see like what, what will be hap is happening already and uh, will be happening in the future and where we as kind of Latvia can kind of uh, accelerate the development is really kind of be less fearful of, of new things uh, because like what, what, what we see is that uh, the countries that kind of are from, uh, kind of frog leafing taking the initiatives uh, and kind of opening the markets up, they are the ones where like the new players are going and they will kind of establish them and later on it's relatively hard to kind of uh, convince them to kind of go go anywhere else. Right. Uh, so therefore kind of, yeah, just kind of from regulators perspective and it's not only regulator, it's really kind of combination with, uh, in most cases with kind of uh, Ministry of Finance which is often the one who is also uh, setting or kind of involved in setting the, the, the rules, mm -hmm. we just need to kind of, uh, yeah, kind of ta take the chances. And uh, one thing what you also should be taking into account is that, uh, well, whenever like something at first is developed, it's it's relatively small, and of course something will be fucked up, and yeah. shit will happen. But uh, you fuck up it in a kind of small scale, and by that you kind of learn, and without kind of really posing a big ri big risk. Right. So, uh, yeah, I think that just like be more courageous and <laughs> kind of take on the challenges from both regulators and uh, ministries perspective. Awesome. Thank you very much. So you heard already the next question I'm going to uh, ask you uh, about the courage and uh, pretty much everything what you heard from, from Tina and, and Martin. Uh, what's your take on that and can the ministry, can other regulations, can we as a public sector representative be more courageous? Uh, of course, regarding the fintech sector, we uh, we recognize that there is a big potential for the possibilities of growth, and therefore we we are aiming at uh, what uh, let's say uh, more development mood for this uh, for this sector than let's say looking at restriction. But uh, we are. Um, uh, also in the environment of the EU regulatory uh, initiatives and uh, of course uh, for the sake of the getting the access to, to the whole EU market um, we will have to, to build these uh, regulations uh, looking at uh, what will be um, uh, let's say what will be uh, allowed uh, or, or which are the trends uh, which will be set by the EU regulators and also uh, EU um, regulatory initiatives like uh, marketing crypto assets and, and uh, the Digital Operational Resilience Act. And um, so uh, I, will, I will not say that we will follow, but uh, we are in the mood that we are ready to develop this sector and, and um, not to restrict too much. Sweet, thank you very much. And Fredis, you as a representative of the municipality, is Riga courageous enough to be up front for the talent and for whole fintech sector globally? I hope so. <laughs> I mean, that, that's why the Riga Investment Tourism Agency was created. Exactly. I mean, we didn't uh, really do a lot in, in, in previous years when it comes to attracting the investment. But I think um, there are two parts of when it comes to kind of uh, competitiveness of the city or the country. There is kind of the hard, uh, hard data part where right. we just look on uh, how, what's the infrastructure, what's the taxes, you know, the, the kind of the background work of any location advisory consultants which is done. And from that perspective, I think we're, we're quite good. Uh, we have the infrastructure, we have people, we need more, but still we, we, we are one of the biggest cities in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but the part which I think is missing, and I think it was really well said in the start that it's not about being big or small, it's about being fast or, or, or slow. Uh, I think we need to become faster, that's one aspect. And second, what I think we uh, should be better is to, how to market and sell ourselves, mm -hmm. the soft part. I mean, now we have, and 
you guys talked a lot about, uh, I mean, the, done, uh, the job done in terms of uh, regulation and all the kind of the back office work, see if we can call it yeah. that way. That's the product, right? But now the question, how do we sell and market that product globally? Because it's not only enough to create it. And I think that's where sometimes our neighbors are a bit faster and better in telling that story. Mm -hmm. So we need to figure out the story and tell it effectively. But you are on the path to it, right? Absolutely. Very well. Uh, and uh, I didn't forget about the Slido as well. Uh, guys, thank you very much. Please send more and more questions. The ones that are quoted are going to be asked. Uh, and just as a reminder, if you go to Slido, the, the code is 2323244. And uh, the one, the most quoted question, I guess it mostly goes for Marine, and uh, I'm not sure whether we can answer that, but the second most quoted is uh, for you. Uh, are you planning to develop a crypto licensing process? Of course, yes, we are in the process when, already now. When is it going to be in place? Uh, I'm sorry? When, when is it going to be in place? Uh, we, are, we are planning it for the, for the next year, the middle of the next year. The middle of next year? Yeah. It's a promise. <laughs> Very well. Uh, Okay, and uh, great. Actually, one of the questions opens up the discussion for uh, the next part of uh, the whole discussion, and it's uh, uh, where do you see the most potential for fintech in Latvia, Martin? That's the question for you. I'll go pretty much through all of you, but Martin, please, knowing the global competition, what is Latvia can offer? What Latvia can offer? Where are we the best? Okay. Well, as we're, good. <laughs> as we're dealing in investment space, so I think the most potential is in investments. But joke aside, like uh, about the uh, kind of future, so there's like one thing that doesn't change. There are like three pillars where kind of financials or fintechs are being developed. So it's investments, it's spending, and it's kind of borrowing. And surprise, surprise, in like two years it will be the same, in three years it will be the same, just the techniques and maybe some asset classes or like ways how it will be done will change. And for Latvia, it's, uh, basically I believe like everywhere, as long as we have kind of a proper uh, infrastructure around and we are not kind of fearful of things, the same crypto. So there are kind of full of people who are kind of dealing with crypto, probably not under any La Latvian license or not Lat uh, Latvian entity but we have the knowledge so we just need the infrastructure and we can develop it so and i think it's like with all all, all those three main pillars what in terms of infrastructure is it just regulation that uh, they not uh, promised already or is it anything else uh, for crypto i mean oh, by infrastructure what i mean it's uh, it is the rules mm -hmm. uh, re regulations and uh, technical infrastructure as kind of banking networks uh, payment networks so. so if this three uh, are in place then we're gonna boom a lot in crypto or is there anything else that we lack yeah because uh, these things are uh, i think some things that is kind of outside of kind of full control of uh, entrepreneurs the rest is something that the entrepreneurs can solve so. i see thank you very much tina uh do you agree with martin are those the strength of latvia or are there other or more i think that i generally agree that i will not uh, add okay but maybe you can add anything else from the association part of it what are in your opinion the strength why where latvia excels uh, we have uh, as we discussed even though there is uh, there is a uh, battle going on for the talent uh, we, we do still have it and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we are as, as you see even without a strategy and even without a, uh, like a structured support uh, from the state so far uh, we have uh, been able to create uh, quite uh, well-known names mm -hmm. um, we have been attracting uh, interest from uh, from uh, from uh, big name investors uh, on the companies that have been created in Latvia, so that is that is that itself shows that uh, that there is uh, this capacity and talent, uh, and where we need help is uh, really uh, access uh, to the infrastructure and uh, more structured approach to how we license, how we regulate, and uh, how we basically help fintech to grow. I see, but Fred has mentioned that we need more and more and more talent. Uh, do we have enough? 
uh, if that's the strength, so we have enough talent, or the short answer is that we need more all I the time? I think there is uh, room for improvement, and uh, we definitely have to uh, enhance how we, how we import also the talent and how we create this environment uh, here uh, as kind of sort of a hub where, where, where people want to come and work for fintechs. And also, you know, taking into consideration the uh, remote work possibilities and uh, and everything. So there is definitely room for improvement. Thanks a lot, Fredis. Uh, your reflection on what Martin and uh, Tina said. Uh, what's your take on Latvian competitiveness and where Riga excels among the Latvia? And then we're gonna go further in Europe. Well, just to reflect also a bit on the on the talent and the question: Are right, we are, sure. do we have enough? I mean, in, um, uh, first of all, to my understanding, the, the the challenge with the talent is not only Riga or Latvia specific. It's mm -hmm. something that uh, all Europe and globally, it's it's a challenge. But what we need to do is we need to look on some uh, niche uh, specialties where where Riga can can excel, right? Because. Mm -hmm just had with Tim discussion before this panel on how, for example, fintech companies view the, the talent availability and look, some of them actually view it a bit better than, than I did, for example, right? right. But, but then also we speak about, let's say, global business services. Again, talent is a lack, maybe DevOps is, is harder to find, but then we have um, one of the best positions when it comes to, for example, Nordic language knowledge. It's, and it's a very specific niche, right? Again, is lack of talent also with, let's say, Norwegian and Swedish uh, language knowledge, but if you look on Vilnius or Tallinn, we're much, much better than, than they are in that sense. And probably to every specific industry, there is some this very specific value proposition that we can go out and sell uh, where we still are better. But otherwise, I mean, the, the four pillars which are outlined in the strategy, uh, I pretty much trust the, the industry experts, what they, what they believe, how, how competitive we are in that sense. Great, amazing. So there is trust. That's what's most important. And then uh, the question for you in terms of strength, Latvian strength, but can you uh, look at the strength of Latvia from the regulatory perspective? What is already good in here uh, for fintech startups to, to relocate? Uh, yes. Um uh, I should say that uh, Latvia has already done uh, pretty good work in um, bringing uh, our financial sector um, from the very low point uh, to a very high point, um, to the very high starting point, uh, not only for, for, for the fintechs, but for all the financial sector to develop. Um, by this, we have proved that we can do uh, by this, we also prove that uh, uh, we are, uh, let's say, um, playing fair game. <laughs> All right. And uh, of course, um, uh, we we are also very uh, very open in in uh, overall communication and initiatives coming from the sector. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, this is also our strengths. What can be, uh, let's say, more improved, as I said, uh, is this uh, interinstitutional cooperation uh, between different uh, different government and governmental institutions to create the awareness of the uh, necessity for the changes. Um, this is this is where where we should uh, should still work on, and mm -hmm. uh, I, s I say that the strategy will help us a lot in this. Thanks, and uh, the follow-up question from the slide as well probably didn't to you um, already. How will Mika help attract new fintech and crypto startups to Latvia? Just people want to know how it's going to affect MICA, uh, how it's going to attract new startups, um, whether it's going to help. So we will have the union-wide, um, let's say, um, rules. Um, mm -hmm. That means that um, uh, this passporting regime will be uh, available and uh, startups can apply for for this uh, license and, and and can operate all over the EU countries. So, I think it's uh, quite a, quite a big achievement if if we are succeeding in in um, applying these um, these rules uh, union wide mm -hmm. uh, because uh, there is there is potential scaling up of uh, of uh, uh, fintech startups. Uh, 
uh, also under MICA rules, and of course we understand that um, uh, MICA regulation is also meant uh, not to restrict, but uh, just to regulate uh, the sector in a, uh, let's say, uh, technology in neutral way. Mm -hmm. That means that um, all kinds of solution can, solutions can be, um, can be developed. And uh, of course, as I said, the main, main benefit will be the accessibility to the EU market, the whole EU market. Sweet. Thank you very much. Do you have any of you uh, that take on that question? How will make a regulation uh, help attract new startups? No? It's okay? All right. Uh, we are going, uh, we have uh, seven minutes left. We're going to wrap up. Uh, so uh, the last question, it's going to be the same for all of you. Uh, the last question from my side is, uh, in regards to you know the societal value, um, I know the, the the audience in here they know what's fintech, why it is important at Tessera, but maybe this the recording of that uh, or online uh, is going to be looked by you know an average person or the one that hasn't uh, been exploring the fintech that much. Uh, and the question is, uh, why should society care about improvement or fintech as a whole and improvement in that sector? Martin, could you please start? Why should society care? Uh, well, for me, it's kind of bringing the Latvian world up, to, uh, kind of outside of Latvia. Uh, I remember it was some time ago I uh, kind of uh, had some kind of lunch dinner. There were like colleagues from uh, US, and they asked like, "What is kind of Latvia famous for? Can you kind of name a famous company outside of Latvia?" And then you think like the, the biggest companies like what kind of electricity production and maybe kind of food uh, selling, nothing what you kind of know much abroad. Uh, at that time, well, Porzenis was even not playing right. basketball, so nobody kind of knew Latvia from the sports perspective. And this is a way how we can yeah, bring, uh, bring uh, Latvia to the kind of world, or at least kind of Euro European level. So the country uh, image, the brand of the country. The Im image and like for people involved in that, I think, well, probably all the people here is not just because they kind of need the work to work in the fintech, they do it because they like it and right. uh, they, they, they love it. And I think this is like a really cool thing that you can do both, kind of do what you love and uh, also kind of make some good things for Latvia out of that. Sweet, thank you very much. Tina, the same question for you. Why should an average Latvian or anyone around the world uh, should care about the fintech sector and its development? Well, I think uh, apart from this uh, image uh, aspect, right. etc., it's like, uh, it's the same question as why should we care for climate change or why should we care for economy to altogether? It's fintech is there. It's part of uh, our industry, it's part, part of our economy. So, uh, so we should all uh, try to understand how to, how to uh, benefit from it and how to become a better place uh, for everyone uh, because of FinTech. Uh, so it's like, uh, it's, it's not gonna you know, cease to exist. <laughs> so it's, sure, gonna, it's gonna stay there. So, so we should uh, all understand how to, uh, how to grow together with it. So uh, the country brand, the quality of life, and all the, the, the whole picture. Uh, Fred, is, uh, what's your take on that? Maybe we shouldn't repeat what the guys said. Uh, well, for, for me, it's very simple. My job is here to, to, bring, uh, uh, to bring new companies and jobs to, to Riga, right? right? And the jobs which are uh, highly paid and uh, uh, which will, in a sense, form the economy of the city in the next five, 10 years, right? So. It's as simple as that. We need we need to make sure that Riga citizens have good jobs with good good money. So it's about the jobs. Anything else? In terms, I understand the jobs is something that comes to mind very fast, right? New jobs, fintech sector growing rapidly. We're gonna higher salaries, good jobs, uh, country's image. Anything else? Why you know what can be an extra plus or an extra motivation for the average society member to to care about fintech or to follow it? Well, I think also what already has been mentioned, like there, there are numerous things we can look at and, and I mean the image of the city, the image of the country, if we bring these companies in the sector and we develop it here and so on and so on. But I mean the end game, 
the end game for everyone and for the cities is uh, is the economy and and the quality of life for people here. Right. So this is kind of the the ultimate goal of any modern uh, modern um, sector which we're developing here. Got it. Thank you very much. Lina, the same question. I'm sorry that I am repeating myself, but I'm very curious about what, what's your take? Why, why, why we should care? Uh, I think the most uh, important issue why we should care about the fintechs is fintechs are offering high quality, low cost services to our customers. This is key for the creation of the competition in the market. This is, a, this is a one mm -hmm. answer. The second one is that fintechs will create a spin-off to all the other sectors. So that means that uh, fintechs will drive the change also in other sectors. And of course, this innovative environment as such for um, attracting more uh, innovative solutions, this networking and uh, attraction of talent is also very important. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all of you. So we went through the present, we explored that, we dived a little into the future, what, might, what, what the technologies might be uh, in the future, the most applicable. We went through a little regulation and we got a promise from Dina uh, in terms of the crypto licensing uh, regulation. Uh, and uh, we know now that society, everyone, I guess, my subjective opinion, but everyone should care about whether the fintech sector in Latvia is growing, is booming, is everything all right, so we would have a you know, progressive and valuable image of the country, so we would have the high, higher, the highest, higher uh, quality of life for everyone and the jobs that inspire, that drive change, and maybe drive more innovations, more startups, so all the citizens, all the one that is involved could you know, implement their dreams and uh, realize their talents. Thank you very much for the discussion. Uh, please, uh, audience, give applause to Martin Schwalters, Pina Luce, Fredis Bikovs, Dina Busse. Applause to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fintechs come and go, but photos stay, at least for the next 100 years. Uh, so it was first panel devoted to development trends and industry forecast in Latvia. We will now have 20 minutes networking break. We will reconvene at 11.55 for those who have already bright, innovative ideas, or simply who want to learn answers to at least half of the questions regarding regulatory matters, please meet with me or eight other my colleagues from FCMC. You can notice we have bright t-shirts and if you do not manage to talk, remember on the other side you have also a web page fintechlatvia.eu where you can reach us. So enjoy networking and please be back 11.55. Thank you.